become a Medina of all manner of activity. Stick around, said Rob. I did. I was in Jamaica for about another three weeks. During that time, I saw Bob several more times. I watched rehearsals at 56 Hope Road, saw Bob playing with some of his 13 kids, the ones that had just released their first record as the Melody Makers, and found him with one of the most gorgeous women that had ever crossed my eyes, a different one from the car driver at 56 Hope Road, and a 12 tribe granation one Saturday night on the edge of the hills. She turned out to be Cindy Bracebeer, Jamaica's former Miss World. And I interviewed him for an article. Whilst doing so, I remember feeling a measure of guilt for taking up so much of his precious time. Though then, I didn't realise precisely quite how precious and finite it was. Part of the reason I thought this was because I thought Bob Marley looked terribly tired and strained. It was only just over 18 months later that he collapsed whilst jogging in Central Park with his friend Skill Cole, the footballer was diagnosed as suffering from cancer. It came as a deep, unpleasant shock just before midnight on May the 11th, 1981, to receive a phone call from the now late Rob Partridge, who had so assiduously handled Bob's publicity for Island Records, <coughs> to be told that Bob had lost his fight with cancer and passed on. I'd always believed that Bob would beat the disease. Although I wrote his obituary for the NME, it seemed my relationship with Bob Marley and his music was only just beginning. Within two years, I was back in Jamaica, writing a story for the Face magazine about the release of the posthumous Bob Marley album, Confrontation. It was February 1983. Again, jet lag caused me to wake early on the first morning I was there. Getting out of bed, I switched on the radio in my room. The JBC 7 o'clock news came on with its first story. Released from the gun court today is Michael Bernard. Wow, phew, that Jamaica will get you every time. The island really is a land of magic realism, a physical, geographical place that is like a manifestation of the collective unconscious. So, that's kind of how I came to write this book, really. <laughs> so, I'm going to read you a section from an earlier period <coughs> of Bob's life, when things... You know, the, the, the whalers, Bob and the whalers were already quite big in Jamaica. They were very big, but they're broke. And Bob, who's been going through a lot of pressure... This is 1967, the middle of 1967. He's been going through a lot of pressure within himself. He's really been suffering from writer's block. There's been other tricky stuff 